Hello, John Talley here with Partzilla.com. Today we're going to be tackling the lower ball joint on our 2007 Yamaha Grizzly YFM 700. It's actually part of the steering knuckle, so that makes it a little bit different. So, let's head over to the table, talk about the tools and the parts you're going to need to pull this off. This project is going to be a skill level two, but don't let that scare you. Let's go over some of the tools that you're gonna to need to pull this off. On the torque wrench side, you wanna make sure that you have one that can go up to at least 125. Other than that, just a 3 8 ratchet. And on the socket side, a 12, 17, 19, 27, and 32 millimeter socket. A couple of different set of suppliers, whether it be needle nose or side cutters, 14 millimeter wrench, an impact with a uh, Phillips blade on it and a couple of different hammers. Now, if you would, reference our exploded parts diagrams. That's gonna give you an exact picture of how everything is gonna come apart and more importantly, how it's gonna go back together. If you're having a little trouble determining which parts you need for your project, well, we actually have a list compiled down in the description. So you click the link in there, bam, there's your shopping list. So once you've got your tools and your parts together, we can go over there and I can walk you through the process. So let's go. It starts off really simple, guys. We need to get the front of the machine lifted. Just make sure that you're using a jack that's stable and can hold it in place. Now with the unit up in the air, all we need to do is get the tire off. All right, let's start off by getting this outer cover off. And what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove this uh, axle nut. We wanna take a punch and relieve where it's actually bent in onto the axle, then we can get the nut removed. All right, with that bent back, you can either have somebody hold the brakes or do like I'm gonna do and just use an impact to pop it off. Let's go ahead and get our caliper off and then we'll start getting that knuckle pulled down. Just two 12 millimeters to hold the, the caliper bracket on to the knuckle housing. And what we're gonna do is lift it up and out of the way and hang it by a zip tie, maybe off of that spring. As you can tell, the brake pads on this unit are brand new, so if you need help changing out yours, why don't you go check out our video that shows you how to do it. All right, we're going to take off our steering arm and upper control arm, and, but there's a couple of cotter pins we have to get out first. Go ahead and get the steering arm first. And we need to use a dead blow hammer on that because a regular hammer is going to damage the threads. We're going to have to get a little bit more personal with this thing. That got it. That was a last resort. I hate doing that, but it is what it is. What I did is took the castle nut and just put it on backwards. And there was just enough of a gap right here to where I could hit it with a direct blow hammer or metal hammer. And that was enough of a shock to get it out of there. All right, with our steering arm out of the way, let's go for that upper ball joint. All right, let's see if we can knock it out with a punch. I want to be careful doing it this way and not damage the threads. Right, well, seeing how that's about to fall off, let's go ahead and get it out of the way. There we go. Now let's go ahead and get off that lower ball joint. It's just held in by a 19 millimeter down at the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and reverse it, put it back on, then use our hammer to pop it loose. There she goes. All right guys, we've got her off. Let's take her over to the press, get that circlip off, get the old one pressed out, and get the new one put in. So let's get this protective cover out of the way. And if you don't own one of these, you need to get one. Otherwise, if you tried to do that with just a regular Phillips, it would have stripped. Pretty much guarantee you that. All right, let's get the circlip pulled off. All right, with our circlip off, we're going to pop it up here in the vise, and we just want to open it up just enough to get around the back side of that ball joint and see if we can drive it out. All right, well, she's out. It's not real pretty, but that's a way to get it done. All right, the surfaces look good here, guys. Everything's clean enough to go back together. 
Once again, we can't use the press because just the way this thing is designed, and we don't have the special tool, and I bet you don't either, so I'm using a socket big enough to go around the front side, and we're going to use our vise to drive it back in. Make sure you're square going in. I'm just kind of moving it around the outside edge, back and forth, to make sure I'm centered. Kind of trying to wiggle it, wiggle it in there. Not the easiest way. It's the only way I can come up with without having to buy that Yamaha special tool. And what are the indicators that you need to replace a ball joint? Well, if there's a cut in one of the boots, yes, you need to go to replace it. If you jack up the machine and you try to rock it back and forth and it's actually clicking on the inside of the control arms, well, that's your second indicator that that joint is worn out. Believe it or not, guys, that's it. All right, let's get that circlip put back on there. Circlip in, then that plastic cover. Well, okay, let's get it put back on the machine. Should we ever have to take this back apart again, go ahead and take just a little bit of grease to the splines so it doesn't rust and it'll come apart easily. Get that slid back through, get our lower one on. Get it started. And our upper. All right, we're just going to snug them down to begin with, then we'll get them torqued. The lower ball joint gets set to 22 foot pounds. Go and get our cotter pin back through. Then the upper is 18 foot pounds. Now, as luck would have it, none of those holes lined up, so I'd just put a little bit more on it to where I can get it to go through. Sometimes it takes what it takes. Now let's get the uh, steering arm on. And this one, if you were paying attention, actually has a washer on it. And it will go to 18 foot-pounds. All right, at this point, let's go ahead and get this outer hub on. And it's important here to use a new axle nut because we have to restake it. So we're going to go ahead and draw this in. All right, now we can cut our caliper bracket loose, get it remounted, and then get this torque down. And for each one of these, it's going to be 22 foot-pounds. All right, this guy right here has to have 190 foot-pounds on it. So how are we going to do that? What I'm going to do is get all these tools out of the way, take off my center cap on the wheel itself, remount it, drop it down, put it in park, hold the brakes, and have it sitting on the ground. And that should be enough to hold it still to bring it around to 190 foot-pounds. There we go. Take the tire back off, then we can stake it, put the cap back on, and finish it up. Now 40 pounds on the lug nuts. Well, all right guys, that wraps this one up. Well listen, if you need any parts for your machine, why don't you come see us at partzilla.com and we can get you taken care of. You like what you see? Why don't you hit that subscribe button, that way you can keep up with what I'm going to be doing next. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at Partzilla, and we will see you in the next video. Have a great day.